Hi, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe. Hi, I'm Rob from RobNoFoto.com and in today's little video I'm going to show you how to add copyright information to your photographs um, as you're taking them with your Canon EOS 600D Rebel um, T3i and basically what, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the menu settings and within there there's a, there's a menu where we can go, we can tell the camera, look, this is my name this is my email address, this is my copyright details embed them please with the photograph so when you take a, a jpeg image for example with all the other data like it was taken at f8 uh, 1 1 25th of a second at uh, 55 millimeters with a white balance of blah -de blah -de blah also it will then say in my case it will say rob nund uh, copyright rob nund scale speed of gmail.com and so if anybody comes along and they see my photograph on the internet um and they download it they right click it and download it as long as wherever it, it has been shared to either Flickr, or facebook everything as long as they haven't stripped all that data out which sometimes they do if they're conscientious and they think actually i want my using this photograph for my newspaper magazine website whatever they can right click it look on properties and lo and behold there's my details so they can contact me they can give me some credit they might even want to pay for it now when you do this with um, raw files I think it, do, it does it slightly differently and it adds it to an XMP uh, sidecar file which then um, when you export the photo um, to a JPEG because that's how you're going to share it on the internet isn't it or, or print it out then that's when you want to add it in uh, and I think adding the copyright info just really adds it to, to, to JPEG but as I only just sort of kind of shoot JPEGs um, that's fine by me now there's a big kind of caveat there's a big kind of catch to all this is, is the fact that just by adding your copyright information to a photograph doesn't mean the people are going to not steal your images it doesn't mean they're going to not borrow your images it doesn't mean they're going to take not take them and um, say they're their own or use them on their own websites print them out themselves um, and do all this sort of thing i think as photographers who use the internet you, we have to accept that people do not understand what copyright is okay um 90% of the people who go on the internet, and this includes professional publishers who publish um, magazines or who are part of professional organizations that might be companies, charities, or whatever, think that if something is on the internet, i.e., a photograph, it's okay for them to right click, download, right click, copy, right click, save as, and then use that photo themselves. People just think they can. All right, now I'm not saying that's right. Obviously, I think it's pretty much wrong, but you can't get around that. And if you don't want anybody to steal your images or use them without authorization, don't put them on the internet. You know, just don't put them on the internet. Because if you put your photographs on the internet, people will use and borrow and steal them. And so if you're really serious about making sure that people can't do that, adding the copyright information to your photographs isn't going to make any difference. What you need to do is either not put them up on the internet at all, but I mean that spoils the fun, doesn't it? Only put them up in small resolution so people then can't borrow them to print them out or use them on other things. Um, but people, you'd be amazed what people do though. Or uh, we'll put a watermark across them, you know, that, that is difficult for somebody to remove. But even then you'll be surprised you'll see... Um, photos that have got watermarks on them that you used in uh, and other sites i mean a couple of great examples of this are recently um, and these are common known stories of a photographer who was uh, new to the business wanted to become a wedding photographer and was offering to buy other photographers photos to use on their portfolios you know as, as his portfolio to say to, to his potential clients this is the photographs um, I want to use. Now, there's nothing wrong with that offering to buy photos, but if people are willing to buy photographs to use them to take, pretend them their own, you can damn sure that people are nicking photographs to put in their portfolios to say their own. Um, there's been lots of cases where large. There was a case of recently of a large news organisation taking somebody's photos that were being shared on Flickr, 
I'm sorry, on um, Twitter, passing them off as their own, and then re-syndicating these photographs of a very important event to lots of other people, meaning that the original photographer couldn't, you know, lost all these exclusive deals that you had with different people. He then tried to, um, he or she then tried to sue um, this particular news agency, who then basically tried to sue him out of court. Um, in America, I think in the end he won, but you had to go through so many, so many loops. So, you know, if you don't want your photographs to be stolen, if you don't want them to be borrowed, then simply either don't put them up, or put massive watermarks across them, or just upload them in a small file size. However, if like me, you really like sharing your photos, and you like people to look at them really, really big, you know, maybe adding the copyright information isn't going to do any harm at all, is it? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip the camera around and I'm going to show you how to do it on your Canon EOS 600D Rebel T3i. OK, so let's have a look at how you actually add your copyright information to uh, the photos on your 600D Rebel T3i. Well, all you've got to do is turn your camera on, hit the menu button, and then if we start off here on the right hand side, you come all the way across to the uh, second from the right, which is the little spanner, and then you'll probably see you've got custom functions and copyright information. So all you need to do is press set to go into there, and then if we press set again, you can check your copyright info. If you've bought a second hand camera, always check this, because <laughs> you'll want to delete somebody else's details. Um, let's just go back. Um, and so if you're blank, all you need to do is press set and to go into enter author's name. And then you just put your details in. So for example, here, what I've done is I've put my email address after my name. So you've got robnun, skillspeed at gmail.com. And then I've got my copyright details, which I've just put copyright robnun um, 2014. It's as easy as that. I mean, it's a little bit fiddly to do because you've got to go around and, and put all the details in using the, the keyboard to select them. But um, it'll take you five minutes to do. And then in every single photograph you take, your copyright details are embedded in them. Now, I'm not saying this is going to stop people copy, um, stealing your images. Um, however, the data is there. So if somebody, a genuine person, does find a photograph and they do take the effort to look at the EXIF data, you know, just right click properties. They'll see your name and your email address and they'll be able to get in touch if they want to leave, use your photograph legally. And you, and you never know, maybe even give you some money or at least some credit. My name is Rob from robnanphoto.com. Thanks for watching.